The Thanksgiving long weekend coming up, and uh, gratitude is a huge part of Thanksgiving to be thankful for what you have and abundance as well. When it comes to young people, it seems like we're missing out with them the whole concept of gratitude. It often seems like they're quite self centered. It's all about me, and at times they also get titled as spoiled. So, for the importance of gratitude uh, among the younger generation and uh, to teach them early on, the importance of it, whether they're 5 or 25 and why it matters. We're joined on the line by Dr. Carla Fry. She is a registered psychologist who has co-authored the book Gratitude and Kindness, A Modern Parent's Guide to Raising Children in an Era of Entitlement, along with Dr. Lisa Ferrari. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. I'm really pleased to join you. Yes, thanks for taking the time. So what made you write this book, first of all? You know, it really was the demands of the families coming into our offices. Both Dr. Ferrari and I work in clinical practice. This is our first book. But we give a lot of speeches out in the community and we consult every day with families. And again and again, Mm -hmm. parents were coming in saying, you know what, I don't mind getting up at 5 a.m. to drive my kid to soccer or to hockey. I don't mind putting special stuff in their lunch to make them happy on a Friday. I don't mind doing all these things for my kids but the thing of it is is well, I'm not I don't feel appreciated I don't feel like they notice right the time and effort that that I put into doing these things so you, you know what sometimes I'm, I'm grumpy I'm ba- I'm not really like willing to say yes I would but it doesn't even seem like they care that I do these things anyway right and you know what in addition to we heard the flip side too from the kids which the kids were saying you know like whatever I say thank you And then what (laughs) my parents said, I didn't mean it, or I I had too much attitude in my tone. Right. I I do mean it, but I don't know, when they keep asking me, like, to say thank you all the time, it just makes me mad. So, So they both had a different side of the coin, so we were like, okay, the more we started talking about it and doing lectures in the community, the more people were, like, batting down our doors. And we thought, okay, let's put all this stuff together in a book because we had lots of handouts and stuff and stuff, and the, the response has been, like, overwhelming. When we talk about gratitude, how do you define that? We define gratitude not in uh, behavior or speech, such as saying, for example, the word thank you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more of a way of being. It's a deep feeling which compels us to give back, which allows us to sit in it for a second and feel awe and to be truly appreciative of either things that people have given us or just experiences, thoughts, whatever, throughout the day. So it's, it's a way of being, so it's a perspective and the way to see the world, but it's also a, a feeling, much more than it is the action. The action is good too. Right. But that is like so skimming the surface. It's so interesting that you talked about how it's it's a way of being because that's it almost puts as puts it as it's it's a life philosophy. It it really it really really is. You can use that word absolutely. It's a it's a way of interacting, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of ta- it's like a filter mm. through which to take everything that happens to us in, in life. So, yeah, in that way, it's more of a, it really is more of a philosophy. What are some signs that you have seen in young people that gratitude isn't an important issue to them? That it is not an important issue to them? Yes. I think that the, the, the crux of it is the flip side, the entitlement bit, Mm. The, the bit where kids get to a place where they assume that people will do for them. They mm. assume that life should be in their favor or they should be first in line or they should be picked as captain on the team. And, and it's when that in, entitlement bit comes in, when their philosophy, if you will, is me first, I shouldn't have to work for a thing, and I, I need more. You know, I'm not satisfied with what I've got. So then the concept when, when people, grandparents, um, teachers, parents, whoever are talking to them about the gratitude bit, it just doesn't seem to like grab them. It seems to just kind of like roll right over them and off the other side 
And, and what we're really focusing on with families is how to make it meaningful, how to make it matter. For science kids, Yes. They get the statistics behind the research that's come out in the last four or five years. You want to sleep better? Cool. You want to do better in school? Cool. You want to have better friendships? Cool. Let me tell you how you're going to do that. Right. It's about accessing their motivation, you know? Mm-hmm. So when you talk about um, the change that has happened in the past compared to the era that we're in at the moment, so let's say 15 to 20 years ago, um, do you find that in this current period there's an overbearing sense of entitlement and we live in a culture where um, maybe you know discipline is seen as a negative and it's all about individualism? Absolutely. It's, it's stunning in this last one single generation. You know, a lot of changes happen socially and within families over several generations. And technologically. Is, yeah, it, yeah. It's, been, it's been an absolute whiplash. Whether we're talking about social media, where the focus is for the, for the young people to be like, look at me, this is what I did, this is what I achieved, look at me, look at me, look at me. Right. Um, whether you look at it from that angle, because that's definitely a part of it. It's, it's a big swing in parenting. I mean, on the one hand, we really want to give kudos to parents who are now being more child-centric than in days gone by, right? You know, it's no longer um, uh, children should be um, heard only when they're spoken to, you know, go out and play in the traffic sort of scenario, which is good. Right. <laughs> but what we've just swung the pendulum as a culture too far in the if Junior wants to do it, we'll do it. If not, we won't. If Junior wants to live in that neighborhood, we'll live over there. If he doesn't, we won't. It's, it's too much if the kid is happy. And, yeah, you know what? There's not a week that goes by where a parent doesn't come in saying some version of, like, am I allowed to say no to well, my kid? Right. Like, am I going to hurt him if I say no? Right. So that's a weird question, right? Mm-hmm. So it's very important to say no. It's very important to say no without being mad, without right. delivering it in a threatening way, but to say no, I, I love you actually, so I'm going to say no on this one because if I say yes to you every time, you're really not going to know how to cope. So here's the thing, sucks for me to say no, but that's what I'm going to say. Right. So then how do you, is there something that you in particular do with your children um, in terms of striking that balance with words and actions? You know what, the biggest thing is showing them. In my family, Mm -hmm. in the families that I consult with, in the families with Dr. Ferrari, same thing. Rather than giving lip service to, you know, you ought to really appreciate when grandma brings over your favorite meal. Right. That's maybe like 2% of the job. Right. Uh, 98% of the job is living it. Your kids seeing you waving to the other driver and saying, hey, that guy didn't have to stop for me, but he did. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. You writing the thank you notes to the neighbor that bring, brings over whatever, whatever, to congratulate you on your, on your new job. You doing it and walking the walk and also taking like 20-second sound bites to explain it at the same time. We know that kids, you know, we talk longer than about 45 seconds, their eyeballs roll back in their head and that's <laughs> it. Just a quick little, a little couple of words to go along with it. But they need to see us doing it or they won't do it. So when we talk about kids, I guess it can be a bit easier when you just talked about the scenario with the grandma bringing over the meal. But what about teenagers and adults? Yeah, it's really, really significant because, you know, it's, it's even the, the 20-somethings right. are really stuck in this. And I, and I hear a lot of um, employers really complaining about um, young people not really... Um, being appreciative for getting the job or feeling like they're, they'll be just fine if they go in late or if they leave early or if, they, if they're kind of irresponsible. So it's, it's really in there and, in, and the teenage years too. Now, with the teenage years and, um, you know, the, the best effect that we've got, because they are pretty self-centered, I'm, I'm talking about like actually developmentally appropriate self-centered, right? Right. Like, because there's, there's developmental appropriateness in terms of like seeing things uh, out of one's own eye, eyesight. But anyway, really to focus on, hey, you introduced me to your friends. I really appreciate that. I know that used to be hard for you. Or like, you called me when you went to the other location and you went from party A to party B. I appreciate that. I know I asked you to do it, but you didn't have to. 
I, I really appreciate that you did that. It makes my heart happy that you're thinking about mm. me. It's really trying to find the little tiny things to point out that they do, because <laughs> depending on, on, on your teenage, teenage behavior, it might be a little bit hard. Right. <laughs> you might right. have to look really hard right. to find those little things, but the little things matter, and pointing out, hey, I appreciate it, I am grateful for, because that helps them live it, and it doesn't feel so luxury. Do you find that if they're brought up from a very young age in an environment uh, where religion teaches you this value of gratitude and um, along with so many others, that um, that really helps them go a long way and, you know, sort of having that ritual at dinner time and, and saying a prayer before, um, you know, sitting down for that meal or even going to before going to bed, you know, listing a few things that you're thankful for on a daily basis? Yes, well... There's a couple of things you brought up there. There's no doubt that, as with anything, the earlier we start with our kids in explaining and living and demonstrating those values, the more powerfully they stick. I'm, I'm not saying give up if you haven't done anything by the time they're 12. I'm just saying it, it's easier and it sticks with them better and they make it a part of the fabric of who they are when we start right off the bat. And when it, whether it's cultural or religious values that you bring into it, mm-hmm. It's, it's brilliant if everybody lives it. We in our family, coming from our faith, believe that giving back or being appreciative is important. And, and, and having that identity, not, not having our kids feel like we're pointing fingers at them, like you ought to or I want you to write that note. We as a family, we stand for this thing. And it becomes a we thing, which is way more powerful in the short, medium, and long term for our kids actually being appreciative. Absolutely. Dr. Carla Fry, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.